We're sisters, best friends, and authors on a mission to help you stoke your creative fire and live the life of your dreams. We believe that purpose fuels passion and that creativity is your secret weapon for mass construction. There's never been a better time to bless the world with your dream realized. You're listening to The Kate and Abby Show. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of The Kate and Abby Show. Today, we are diving into a super exciting topic, something that you guys have requested, something that I have seen so many writers asking questions about, which is how to brainstorm a book idea from scratch or a story idea. No matter what medium of storytelling you are using, a lot of writers get stuck at this point. The coming up with an idea that is brilliant and engaging and exciting to write, an idea that you can get excited about. So in today's episode, Kate and I are going to discuss how we come up with book ideas from scratch, our process, and how we fall in love with these ideas and create something extraordinary from them. So we're going to dig into our respective processes in today's video or in today's podcast, and I'm excited to get into this topic. But first, we have to thank our sponsors, who are you guys. You're the ones who support us, support this show, and we couldn't do it without your help. So thank you so much. And if you get value out of this podcast, go to patreon.com slash the Kate and Abby show and help us keep this show alive and free of interruptions. Okay, let's get into it. So I think this is really relevant for us right now because we've been doing a ton of this. Yeah. With our co-written series, which everything we're going to talk about applies to co-writing as well. Because we did that cool episode about co-writing a couple episodes back. And a lot of you guys commented that, you know, on the YouTube version of the podcast that you're doing a co-write or you've got a co-write coming up. So keep in mind, these are things that can be applied to co-writing because that's what me and Abs have been doing a lot of lately. So this is just our respective process, and it's good to figure out what your process is for brainstorming because brainstorming looks different for everybody. Yeah, it does. And if you feel like an imposter because you can't come up with a great story idea immediately, (laughs) don't feel that way because every writer struggles with coming up with story ideas, okay? And it is a very common, common issue that a lot of writers deal with, and We just want to take the scare factor out of it today. Yes. Make it fun. Let's make it fun. Yeah. So when you're sitting down to brainstorm a novel or, you know, you have a potential story idea brewing in the back of your mind, like what's the first thing you do? Because I know you you like taking notes and journaling and stuff. So what's some (laughs) of those first questions you're asking yourself? What's some of the first elements you're looking at? Well, the first thing usually for me is I have to have an initial idea that I'm excited about. So whether that is just a spark of inspiration, an idea for maybe a particular character or a particular relationship between two characters, it's usually something very small that like gets me going at the beginning. Same. I'm like, oh, that could be a cool story. And I just write down the ideas as they come to me. I I try not to overwhelm myself. So kind of just brain dump. Yeah, just like brain dump everything that I've been thinking about. And I try not to overwhelm myself with like figuring everything out right away because it doesn't really matter, you know, when you figure these things out, especially if you have a lot of story ideas, which I do. (laughs) I have a lot of plot bunnies. But it's, it's fun that way because you can kind of brainstorm at your own pace you know right so that's the that's the first thing I do what about you for me usually I get an idea like you were saying from some small inspiration a lot of times it will be um one for me that has been reoccurring is a title Mm. (laughs) and then a meaning behind the title like it would be called this and it would be a story about this and it will kind of just come to me in a flash yeah and then I'll flush everything out from there so a lot of times it will be just a small spark of inspiration and like maybe it's, you know, a relationship or a theme. And right. um, it will just be a small glimmer of inspiration. And then I just start building it from there. Well, who would the main characters be? That's usually the first thought I have. Mm. Who are the main characters? And what is their internal conflict? Yes. <laughs> you know, that's yeah. that's important. That's as important. That's more important than... The world building and where it takes place and what genre it is because 
all those other things are great, but if you don't have the internal conflict, if you don't know who are the main characters and what are they struggling with, what are they sifting through, what are they dealing with here, then you don't really have a story. Exactly. Until you have that. Yeah, that's so true. And the characters are so, so important, which is why that's one of the main things that I would say to focus on in the, in the very beginning is who are you writing this story about? Not so much what is it about, but who is it about? Mm. And I think that's where a lot of writers, especially new writers, make the mistake of focusing too much on the plot yeah. and not enough on the characters. And they think, oh, okay, I have to make something exciting happen. Right. But it doesn't really matter because nobody will care about it if they don't care about the characters. Right, because I think a lot of people, too, with certain genres, don't they say, like, I've heard you talk about this before, like, um, uh, uh, like this is... Um, genre fiction is that what this like you've said before it's like kind of like well these people who like this genre are going to watch this because they like plots like this right so the internal conflict doesn't matter as much because this is like genre fiction is it is that the term they use I, I believe so yeah, yeah something like that like in, in okay superhero marvel dc comics those right. are more you know plot driven and people who like superhero plots are going to show up for this kind of plot but yet that's not even true because <laughs> Because every single one of like Marvel's films, DC Comics films that are like super successful, if you actually look at the data on their most successful films, which I find fascinating, it's the it's the characters with the most internal conflict that they were able to start those first films out mm -hmm. with lots of internal conflict, get you really hooked to that character and who they are. It's not just about the action and the explosions and, you know, the the saving saving lives and saving the world it's we love the character and those are always the top ones that rise to the top in the data so there really is no such thing as you know oh i'm just gonna write a plot without the characters i mean you can do that but it's not gonna have the same effect yeah regardless and of what genre Exactly. And this is why writing prompts don't work. Mm. <laughs> and I've talked about this on my channel before, that most writing prompts, if you just go on Pinterest or something and search writing prompts, you will be met with a bunch of results that are a bunch of writing, pro writing prompts based on basically plot ideas that don't have to do with internal conflict or the characters. It's always like an external thing happening to a character. But why do we care? What is the what is the deeper meaning behind this? Right. Why, why does it matter to the character? That is the secret ingredient that is missing from every writing prompt I've ever seen. And it never has to do with the internal conflict. It never has to do with what is the character's fatal flaw? What is their misbelief? What are they personally dealing with? Because it's kind of like asking, how would someone react to X, Y, Z rather than yeah. why would someone react that way right. to X, Y, Z? Yeah. Because it can be like, you know, okay, a bank is being robbed and you're standing right in the middle of it. What do you do? Yeah. <laughs> well, we can answer that question because our brain starts automatically answering that question. What would we do in a life-threatening situation? Mm -hmm. But... To understand why would your character do certain things? What is the motive behind it? Yeah. It's not just why would they instinctually react that way to a certain thing or like, you know, uh, a breakup and then what? It's like, well, we can all go through in our mind, like what neurons would that fire off for us? Right. And what would we do next? But to actually flesh out a character who has internal conflict and be like, well, why would they react that way? That's what you see in the great stories that we love and we talk about on this podcast right. is they have fleshed out the characters so much that it's like you can predict why they're going to react a certain way. Right. We can anticipate it. We can look forward to it. Exactly. And so instead of you going through the story from your own perspective, you're looking at it now from the character's perspective. You're stepping into the shoes of the character, becoming the character rather than the character sort of becoming you, you know? Yes, um, that's a good way to put it. And that's the, really the difference between the plot-driven stories and character-driven stories, which of course is another podcast for another time. <laughs> but it's important to think about when you're coming up with a story idea, because I know a lot of writers will go to writing prompts for story ideas and they don't work because you can't get excited about them because they don't matter to you and they don't matter to the characters. Mm -hmm. So I think the main most important 
element to figure out is your characters and what they're internally dealing with and their fatal flaw or misbelief because that's going to tie into your theme and your theme is the reason you care about the story on a deeper level you know right the reason it matters to you as the author because you want to share a big idea with your audience and that's where your theme comes in right. but of course it is important to think about genre when you are first coming up with a story idea because that will determine certain parameters of what's possible in your story so i think when you're not sure what genre to write or what direction to go in with that it's important to notice what you personally are attracted to like what do you find fun to write or what do you find fun to read because the thing that you are usually attracted to read is the thing that you're going to like writing or the thing that you find yourself watching a lot of tv series or movies in that genre you're probably going to enjoy writing that genre right <laughs> although it's funny because like not always because <laughs> like not literally always. almost 100 percent of what i watch is like historical fiction period drama medieval drama and i would yeah. never write any of that but your fantasy but is quite a bit medieval. that's true you know? that is true yeah so but like i don't watch a lot of fantasy yeah. Except for like my favorites. Right. But like I'm not like constantly watching new fantasy. I yeah. mostly watch like realistic period stuff. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, but even then you're right because look at what elements do you love? Right. Is it the strong relationships in the story? Exactly. Is it the vibe of the story? Is it that it's a mystery or suspenseful? What do you absolutely love? What's addictive to you? Because you want to get addicted to your own story. Exactly. You know what I mean? So I think you're right on. Yeah. And I think not overthinking genre is also important too because you can also like cross genres. I mean, right. we're doing that a lot in our series yeah. too. Like our series is pretty mixed genre. So I think that, um, but establishing it at the outset is important. Yes, because sure. you don't want to be figuring it out halfway through. Yeah. <laughs> and then having to go back and rewrite I actually changed stuff. my mind. Yeah. This isn't going to be sci-fi. It's going to be, you know, contemporary. So even if it's a <laughs> blended mix, like that story blender thing you talked about in yeah, one of your videos. Exactly. That was a really good way. That We'll link that in the video version of this podcast um, because that was a really good way to figure out like, okay, what are my favorite things from my favorite stories? And then like pulse it in the imaginary blender and then what do you got? And figure that out at the outset. Yeah. And drawing inspiration from your favorite stories is just so good to do because it's not plagiarism. <laughs> it is drawing inspiration and creating something unique that the world has not seen before. And that is what every great writer and creative has ever done is draw inspiration from many many different sources to create something unique something that's all your own exactly but still has that heart and soul in it that you love so much you know the right. thing that that has brought you so much joy and inspiration that's, right that's what you that's the magic that you want to include in your book for sure and so I think that the most important things to nail at the beginning are really the characters, the theme or the overarching big idea that you want to share through this story, and just a basic understanding of what journey your character is going to go on, right. your protagonist. Even if you don't know the whole story yet or the whole picture yet, it's totally okay. Just starting with an understanding of what kind of journey your character is going to go on, what they're going to learn as a result of their journey. And as you start asking yourself those questions, I think the plot comes naturally. Mm. Yeah, so a lot true. of people ask me how to come up with like a plot <laughs> that goes with the character journey. But I think that a lot of that comes as you go and as you draw inspiration and just let yourself be creatively free. Right. And that all comes together. <laughs> I know it's like sometimes frustrating because you're like, I want to know everything now. But oftentimes I've changed my mind like so many times during the outlining process, during the writing process, even right. because I'm trying to listen to my creativity and see where where do these characters need to go? Not where does my reader want the plot to go, you right. know? Yes. And oftentimes listening to your characters and 
their needs is the best thing. Yeah. You know. Right. And, and the character journey is the plot. Right. Exactly. That's the thing is it's not two separate things. Like here is the plot and it's like this vehicle in which the characters are sitting. Think of the characters are not in a vehicle. The characters are just walking and they themselves are the plot. Right. So there's no vehicle carrying them. They are the vehicle. Right. So that's a better way to look at it, yeah. I think. Instead of there's a plot and within that plot there are characters right. and events taking place. All there is is the characters and the events right. taking place. And the events taking that place happen what, because of their decisions. Becomes, yes. You know, because of their active choices to make things happen. And even if the plot is, even if other external things are happening to them, it should always be an active decision that follows. There's an action, there's a reaction. There is a choice being made, a decision being made. That's what makes your characters active and not passive or makes them not punching bags for the plot as I like to say because in order to care about these characters you have to see their decision making process you have to see them struggle and grapple with the choices they have to make right you know that's what brings us that's what engages us as the audience yeah because we're in we're now in the shoes of this character we feel their internal conflict we feel like we're struggling with these decisions along with them so if your characters never have to make any decisions First of all, you won't have much of a plot. And second of all, you won't have much of character depth, you know? Yeah, because exactly. They, these characters could be anybody else, like we were saying in the last episode. Right, exactly. That's the thing, is if it could be any other character in the book, then why do we care about the main character? Why don't we just care about all of, them, all of the characters? It's more like a choose-your-own-adventure story where it's just like we're reacting in our own minds yeah. to how we would react in that situation. Right. You know, and we don't want it to be that. We want it to be very unique to the character's specific journey. Yeah. And another element that can come into play here, which can help you craft a plot is the world that your story takes place in. Whether it's an imaginary world, fantasy world, or it's the real world. <laughs> it's supposed to be in the real world. Um, in any case, the setting and the world of your story can help to support your plot. It's not your whole plot, and you certainly shouldn't start with that. This is, this is another one of those things that I see a lot of writers start with the world. Like, okay, I have to come up with a great, you know, unique fantasy world that has not been done before. Well, chances are everything's been done before <laughs> pretty yeah. much. Yes. Pretty much with little variation. So it, that's not what's going to grab your reader by the heartstrings. Absolutely not. It's your characters. But the, the world can support your characters and their story and be really cool and colorful and dynamic and memorable. Yes, that's what we want for our world. But... That, to me, always comes after the fact, after the establishment of the characters and their internal conflict right. and the journey they're going to go on. Um, but, of course, world building is something that you should take into account, especially if you're writing something that's uh, not taking place in the real world. Right. But finding ways for it to incorporate smoothly with your character's journey and support their journey rather than be a distraction from the journey. Right. You know? Like Nar the Narnia series is such a great example of yeah. the world, not starting with the world, but <laughs> bringing the world in when it ma starts to matter to the characters. We did a whole episode. It was actually one of the first episodes we did of this podcast that was about Narnia and how it's a masterclass in storytelling. So we'll link that below as well in the YouTube version of this podcast episode because it is... It nails those points. Right. Using the world building to support the character's journey, not just, hey, look at how amazing this world building is. Look how funky this is. There's a lion and talking animals and a witch and there's a snowy forest. And we're going to just talk about that right from the outset. Let's just lay on the world building. Yeah. And then later on, yeah, by the way, there's these kids called the Pevensies, but look at this world building though. You know what I mean? <laughs> exactly. We start with the characters. We start with their internal conflict. Yeah. And then when it matters to them, then there's that world to support the character's journey. And it's just nailed perfectly yeah, throughout and, that and whole series, really. Yes, very true. 
and you don't learn about the whole thing. You know, it's like whatever is specifically this one part that specifically matters to this one character at this one time and then it starts to unravel yes the, the deeper you go so that to me is the i mean we could do a whole we have done topics on a uh, podcast on world building but that to me is like the most important thing to remember is not answering questions before they're asked <laughs> And that's what so many writers do with world building is like, well, let me let me give you the backstory of this entire world and, and everything that's going on. And let me craft this whole scene for you first. And then we can we can meet the characters and the plot and everything that is not paramount in a story because your characters are the most important element, as we have said, but it's. Like, it's like answering your questions before you ask the questions, you know? If I get to know these characters and I'm pulled into this world and they start to go on this journey that I care about now because I care about them as characters and the world is slowly being revealed to me, I'm asking questions, right. you know? I'm wondering what's going on here? Why does this matter? Why, what's, what's the world around these characters? And, right. And as I ask these questions... Now I start to get answers. Now the answers matter to me. Whereas without any context in the beginning, getting the answers before I asked the questions, the answers didn't matter to me. You know right. I mean? It's kind of starting either from starting small and zooming out or starting from a bird's eye view and slowly zooming in. Right. And what that can do is when you start with the world building and the government and the science and the all this more of uh, these more obtuse elements, what it actually causes the reader to do is start hunting. And that's like a term in photography when the your focus doesn't understand what it's supposed to focus on. And it's like kind of zooming in, zooming out, like, wait, where's the subject? Is that the subject? Is that the subject? I'm not sure. So I'm like hunting for the thing to focus on. Your reader starts hunting for who is the subject of this story. Yeah. Because we're talking about the government, we're talking about the science, we're talking about the data, we're talking about the landscape and the different, you know, factions or uh, groups of people and whatever. And your the reader's brain is wondering, where do I land? Where's my anchor point? Who's the subject of this story here? And you don't want your reader to have to, to figure that out. You want them to know from the beginning, from the outset, Okay, here's your anchor point. And then now you're going to see everything through their eyes. And we're going to zoom out. We're going to answer all those questions. But it's going to matter to that main protagonist. And you're already going to be anchored in them. So your reader is actually more at ease because they already are like, okay, I found my landing point. Now I'm, they're actually in a more relaxed state mentally. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, totally. That's a, that's a great analogy. That's exactly what my brain does when I go into a story, when I start reading a book and there's a bunch of exposition and I don't really know what I'm supposed to care about. Right. Especially in those I'm first few pages, about. which is yeah. what we talked about in what last, last week's episode about starting your story with a bang and yes. starting it in a tight, cohesive way so that your reader knows right away you know, who the protagonist is, and they can get hooked into the story. When you have too much pages and pages of here's the world building, here's all this other stuff, those are vital moments when you want to capture someone with emotion and not these more obtuse conceptual ideas of how your world is being constructed. Right. Because what can we relate to? Mm. We can relate to internal conflict because we all have internal conflict. So if you can show me the one thing that is familiar that I can relate to, especially in a fantasy world or something that's very unfamiliar to real life, Good that point. is something that my heart connects with. Mm. You know, I connect with that on a deeper level. And now the other elements are cool and colorful and they support the characters, but they aren't the thing that grabs my heart. Right. You know? Which so is a true. great segue into the last thing I was going to touch on, which is subplots. And I think a lot of writers get confused with writing subplots. I want to make more videos on subplots. But at the beginning, when you're starting to develop your story, you might think, okay, I have to come up with a bunch of great subplots that can happen on the side with my side characters and be running parallel with my main character's story. But 
that is another thing that I would suggest putting more towards the back burner and allowing to flow naturally from the characters who we end up caring about because the protagonist cares about them because they matter directly to the protagonist. This is something I've seen done many times with dividing your reader's attention or the audience's attention too much between so many characters that we don't know who is the anchor point like you were like you were trying to like you were saying very earlier important. about yeah. hunting, you know, for the what am I supposed to focus on? And it depends on how large your cast is obviously, but there should be an anchor character. There should be a character that we see everything through the lens of that character, even when we don't. Like whenever we go away from that character, we're constantly wondering what's going to happen when we go back to that character. How are they going to look at the events that are currently happening? And how do the sub characters directly matter to them? Then we can start exploring some subplots with those characters. But dividing our attention too much is a recipe for disaster. (laughs) Right. So, so true. So that's another thing just to uh, keep in mind. I have a couple videos on subplots and side characters that you should check out on my channel. I'm going to make some more videos on subplots because I've had a lot of writers asking me about subplots lately, and I think it's a untapped topic mm. and yeah. i don't hear a lot of writers talk about it but it's so it's so crucial to right it is crucial because it can story. either like we were talking about this uh just this morning when we were talking about a, 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 a drama series we recently watched that didn't handle subplots very well and how it can either it can make or break your story in a lot of ways because it can either be this boring thing that you're like oh when are we getting back to the main character or it can be something that really adds so much spice and flavor and intrigue to the yes. story so it yes. is important very much so. But yeah, hopefully you guys got some value out of our discussion today. Hopefully you have taken some notes and walked away with some valuable tips that you can have at your ready for when you brainstorm your next book idea, or maybe you had some great book ideas, story ideas while listening. I hope you did. Comment below and join the discussion. Tell us what you thought about this episode and... Also, check out something special that Kate has been working on. Yeah, so you guys, some of you know, I on top of writing, I love making charms, hand weaving charms, bookmarks with little charms on them to go along with your reading journey. It's like I make them super funky. I do different things. They're limited editions and they come out on Mondays. So I only make like 12 of them and they have different themes on different Mondays. And today I'm releasing one special for you guys. Speaking of Narnia, they're Narnia themed. There's only 12, so I don't know if they'll still be there by the time you guys click the link, but I'm going to include the link in the video version. I'm holding one up. One is a tree. I only have a couple little golden lions, griffins, and they're just super, super cool. I love to make like funky things to go with your reading journey, mystical feeling things because you all know that I love fantasy. They are so so cool. Yeah, they're really fun. I love the tree. The tree is like especially cool. Yeah, I really like the lions are cool too. And the griffins are really cool too. I love them all. They're all super Narnia. They are. They're very Narnian. And yeah, everyone who's been watching this podcast for a while knows my favorite book is Prince Caspian. My favorite film is Prince Caspian. And so I'm like, man, you know, I'm going to just do something Narnia themed. So special for you guys today. You can find that with the link below the video version of this podcast. Also, be sure to check out Abby's channel. Yes, youtube.com slash Abby Emmons. I have tons of writing videos over there every Wednesday. Also, thank you again to our sponsors, our amazing patrons for supporting this show. We love you guys so much. If you get value out of this podcast, go to patreon.com slash the Kate and Abby show and help us keep it alive and free of interruptions. Until next week, stay stoked and rock on.